you know, I kind of wish that in our two attempts that we had for people to come understand our side, that we had a bigger turnout like today. Unfortunately, we had maybe four or five at each event. And that was unfortunate to me. Uh, kind of bouncing around a little bit. Uh, there will be no self haulers at all. We don't have any intention to have self haulers there. Uh, primarily because you have, that's why you have a transfer station. They will go there, the material then will be hauled from there down to the facility. So we will not have any pickup trucks or cars uh, entering that facility. Uh, with, regards to, um, with regards to us traveling up the northern part of North State Street, I have no problem directing our trucks to go down 101 or up 101, off Lake Mendocino and up State Street. I don't have a problem at all doing that to our drivers. It, it's not an issue to us. Um, and again, Pomo Lane, which was one of the biggest concerns initially, we've never opened up that gate. Someone did open it up this Saturday, and uh, unfortunately, our, one of our staff members did not call the sheriffs, but someone had opened up that gate. But we have never opened that gate up, and we don't intend to. Um, again, bouncing around. Uh, Jerry Ward is building a facility up there, and he should, as we should be able to as well. It's to our best interest as a business and to our ratepayers. But for us to haul material north at $5 a gallon just to watch it pass us going south again doesn't make much business sense. Um, with regards to locating the uh, facility at the transfer station, there simply is not enough room. Um, if there was a bigger spot, if that place was on a couple more acres, we could easily have done it. It's just there is no room there. Um, let's see. As far as water issues, we really won't be using any water. One thing I've learned in dealing with the water board is that you dry sweep everything. At the transfer station at night, we have a, a small caterpillar with a, with a broom, and that's how we clean the floors. We've totally done away with water because it's an issue. So. Our water consumption, uh, you know, I don't think there'll be any increase whatsoever. Uh, and as far as the school bus, I've spent a lot of time at the facility, and I've watched it, and I've seen it, and granted, there is a school bus that goes down that road, but you can certainly dispatch trucks so that they're not there at that time. In fact, I watched, uh, the school kids on Pomo Lane a couple of weeks back, they were all gathered there waiting for the bus and a garbage truck, not mine, went right by them and very close to them. Um, but one thing I've learned being in this business for so long is that you can, you can route trucks so that you're not in certain areas at certain times. And certainly with transfer trucks, it's even easier. Again, in closing, it, it isn't a garbage dump. It isn't the transfer station. You can go to the transfer station, and yeah, you'll smell garbage because that's where it's supposed to be. You won't smell it here. We've, we've sat down and we've answered every single concern that the citizens had. And if there are issues going forward, We'll address those as well. I believe in the uh, in the neg deck. It says that a sound study will be done when the uh, facility opens, and then six months afterwards. And if we have to do something with regards to noise or odors or whatever, which I don't think is going to be a problem, we will mitigate. And the reason why I agree to all these is because I truly believe that there will not be an issue on any of these. I've been doing this a long, long time. I know what garbage smells like. I know what recycling smells like. And to that, thank you. Mr. McCracken, um, um, on the applicant side, you have about 10 minutes remaining. Correct. Uh, Julie Price will be speaking. Okay. All right. Brown Associates, um, agent for the applicant Pacific Recycling Solutions. Uh, there are a number M of inaccuracies. Ms. Price? Yes. Um, as softly as you speak, you're going to have to really direct it right that? into the microphone. Thank you. Okay. Um, there were a number of inaccuracies that were presented by the uh, appellants that we'd like to clear up. 
Um, it's really important to understand that this is, in fact, a clean, low-impact project. Um, the concerns raised by the appellants are not based on the facts of the project. The project is a materials recycling facility. A MRF is not a landfill, as Bruce pointed out. It's not a transfer station. It's not a composting facility. All operations will be conducted indoors, including sorting, baling, and storage. Planning staff has followed the proper procedures per the county code and CEQA. They've received comments from neighboring residents early in the development review process. There was a, a letter writing campaign following a flyer that was circulated throughout uh, the neighborhood. And that actually was helpful, I think, to staff because they, did, they were able to take those letters, look at those concerns, and then they made very certain that the applicant addressed all of those issues and mitigated accordingly. Um, uh, let's see. So these issues were addressed well in the negative declaration, and they provided conditions of approval that are more than adequate to address the, these concerns. Um, I've addressed the appellant's concerns in a letter to you in your board packets. I'm, I hope you've had a chance to read that. I don't want to go into that too deeply, but I do want to hit on some points. Um, first of all, with regard to noise, you understand that a noise study was conducted.